Okay friends, well I'm going to show you progress on the CAN bus dashboard for the Kali controller. I'll show a few pieces of my setup here and then go through the functionality of it. So this is the dashboard, it's made of clear acrylic. The central part there you can see, that's about uh, 70 millimeters high and about 90 or so wide and then there's a much larger back plate here which can be cut to suit uh, whatever dashboard or bike speedo you're trying to replace. Over here we have the brains of the operation, which is an Arduino based and a CAN bus interface and a single DB9 connector for all of the I.O. That I.O. carries power, a current sensor, data to the display and keypad presses back from the display. In my test here, I've got a little throttle box for controlling the Kelly controller. You can see the Kelly controller down here, with its uh, A and B connectors being, being used. And I have a wheel down here for testing. So what I'll do first is turn the controller on. Just doing that on the, on the battery over here. And as we can see, the dashboard lights up. So this is the first of many displays. The last display shown before you power off will be the same one that is shown when you power on again. Cycling through the display is achieved by buttons 4 and 1. Button 2 changes the backlight brightness and number 3 is used for enter or to reset the trip meter in any of the trip displays. So I'm going to cycle through these now. This one shows kilometers per hour. Well, let's start the motor so we can get some useful data. So there we go. It's only running a bike motor, 200 watt bike motor, which is unloaded. So of course we don't see uh, very many amps showing here, but the amps that I amp sensor that I've catered for can cater all the way up to 600 amps. The one I'm using at the moment is, if you can see that, probably not, is just for up to 100 amps. There's a 200 amp, 400 amp, and 600 amp available. That sensor goes on the battery cable. In this case here, we can see it right here. This can measure current in both directions, forward and reverse, so discharging the battery and also for regeneration. Let's go through the menu displays now. We can see here speed, watts, volts and amps. All of this data is coming from the CAN bus from the Kelly controller. Make sure you've got a Kelly controller with the CAN bus option, an extra, it's an extra $50. Next display is kilometers per hour and odometer. This display is kilometers per hour and trip meter. If I press button three, it will reset. I won't reset it now, otherwise it won't show any useful data in some of the other displays. This display shows us the speed, current power, and what hours per kilometer. Currently zero because it's hardly anything. This display shows us speed and motor RPM. This bike hub motor is geared quite significant with quite a significant reduction so you see the uh, RPMs is quite high. Next display we have watts, watt hours, what hours consumed since the last trip meter reset and what hours total and that's forever just like the odometer. Next we have battery capacity. Uh, we have speed, how many watt hours we've used which is six, how much battery capacity is remaining 98 percent and at our current rate of consumption it gives us a remaining range of 174 kilometers. We'll see later on some of the calibration factors which are set up to calculate these things. 
The next set of data is technical data from the Kelly controller. This can be especially useful when you're setting up a system. We can see the pulse width modulation percent. We can see that the controller is enabled and an error code if one exists. I'll demonstrate what happens there a little later with the error codes. There's uh, I think 16 error codes and they can all be displayed as text instead of having to decode the flashing lights. We've got temperature, temperature controller, temperature motor, temperature for the high and low side FETs in degree C. Next we've got some of the configuration that's made over the serial port for the Z dead zones for the throttle and brake. Next we have some inputs here, throttle position sensor, brake position sensor. If I turn the throttle down a little bit, you'll be able to see the volts on the throttle position sensor. Same for brake. Throttle switch is 1, which means that it's open. And brake switch and reverse switch. If I flip the reverse switch, you'll see the controller stops. It's complaining. This is one of the error codes actually. Uh, that is because the throttle has not been returned to zero when you've switched on reverse. On any of the displays, it will flash the error, which is 0x0800, and also a human readable version of it, which is non zero throttle position sensor on reverse. So let's turn that off now. Return the throttle to zero. Our error will go away. Start increasing the throttle and we're spinning the motor again. Let's move on to some more displays. This is the voltage in. That's just a direct sample of the input voltage. This system runs off 12 volts. If the voltage drops below 10, a capacitor holds up the 5 volt rail just long enough to write various data into the EEPROM, such as the odometer, which is very important, and a bunch of other parameters. This option here is to calibrate our current sensor. Uh, that's the offset for our current sensor. So the way we do that is we make sure the motor is stopped. We press the number three. Tells us what the current input is for the analog to digital converter. We press enter again and it stores the value after averaging it 20 times. I'll just turn the power back up a bit and cycle through again. These next screens are for setting up various presets on the speedo. This first one here is the um, is the sensitivity of the current sensor. Um, currently it's configured to 1.6 actually 16 millivolts per amp and this can be read from the data sheet for the speed sensor. We have a negative in front of there that's the way we can adjust for which way around we've put the current sensor on the wire. We can edit each of these values by pressing number three and one buttons one and four either toggle or increment and decrement each figure respectively and we enter 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 until we're done. We can enter five digits of precision here. We can also put in a factor for the revolutions per minute to kilometers per hour conversion. So this would take into account your any gearing on a say a chain reduction or in a differential, tire size and of course the scale factor to kilometers per hour. Um, this can be roughly calculated and then can be fine-tuned using a GPS later on. This is the battery capacity in watt hours. The In this particular case it's a 36 volt battery with 10 point something watt hours, uh, amp hours capacity. So we get a total battery capacity of 374.4 watt hours or in scientific notation 3.744 watt hours uh, by 10 to the 2 watt hours. If I press enter on here it only allows us to change the digits that are we need to change.
this view here shows us uh, what's watt hours per kilometre, what's for the trip, what's for the what's total. Um, might have a, two of those. I'll have to check. Um, and this one shows us current speed, and if this motor were capable of regeneration, we would show how many percent of our power was regenerated back into the battery due to regenerative braking. And this takes us around the complete list of menu options. Uh, looking for feedback on this, if anyone wants to see a particular combination of values combined together on a screen, I'm sure we can accommodate it and adjust it as we need to. At the moment it's metric, kilometres per hour. If you need miles per hour, uh, let me know. We'll look at that as well. Um, what else can I talk about? The display here uh, can have the firmware updated through the communications connector here. If it ever needs it. And also the uh, main processor here can also have the firmware updated via the connector on the right if it's ever needed. All of the cases here are made of acrylic sandwiched together um, just temporarily assembled at the moment um, not quite with the final screws. We'll use stainless steel screws on the front panel um, use hex, hex bolts um, and uh, may or may not um, secure the LCD to the front panel just here. It's held in quite easily uh, just by the pressure and of the uh, folded wiring on the back. Uh, may add some foam there to keep it pressed against the front screen. The front is completely weatherproof. Um, the screws here will have either silicon or wash rubber washers to stop any water getting in. And this little keypad the wires go through to the inside of the enclosure to keep it all nice and nice and waterproof. So it's quite suitable to use on a bike. If you are using it on a bike, I, I would suggest uh, maybe silicon between the sandwiches and silicon or hot glue up the connector hole here once it's finally installed. So there you go. I hope you like it. Uh, first three units will be $250 and I'll help install them as long as they're in Sydney. And after that, looking for $300 per setup, which includes the, the display here, the microprocessor, a current sensor of whatever size is required, up to, I think, 600 amps, and, uh, and a small wiring harness. At the moment, I'm using these... Uh, mini XLR connectors. Uh, they're a bit too expensive and a bit bulky really for use on a, use on a motorbike so I might look for something a little bit lighter. So there we go.